The purpose of this mastermind is really for us to get together, anyone really, and, and I want to do it more often. So, you know, um, if you all, uh, want, once we get going, kind of like the, uh, Shelly, kind of like the weekly workshops, once we get right. going, you all can invite people to it. Um, I'll, of course, keep marketing and pushing it. But really, what I've come to realize is that like people need help. They need kind of some some direction on what the next steps are, right? They need to know um, how to get out of the rut uh, that's keeping them from moving forward. Um, in both of your cases, Dr. Reese and you, Shelly, both of you, you know, have taken that step. But I'm sure there was a moment of time or some time where, you know, you were not moving forward and you didn't know what to do next. And so having somebody to talk to, having someone that you can grow to trust um, through this process is very important. So I want to start doing this so that we can start helping people, uh, you know, figure out what the next step is, uh, whether they go with True Vine or not. You know, just helping people is going to be a benefit to me in growing my business as well as helping other people get to that next level. So what I want to do is I, this is not for me to get on and give speeches and give workshops. I really want to answer questions to help people to um, to to get over that hump. What is the what is the thing that the thing that you're deliberating on? What are the what are the questions that you have that um, that you need to. Um, to get answers so that you can get to the next step of where you want to be. And, uh, you know, the, the one caveat is that it has to, you, you know, execution is the one caveat. Like we'll, we'll give advice here. We'll give uh, information on, you know, your particular questions, but, you know, you have to get to that point where you execute because execution Without execution, everything is just null and void. So I really don't want to belabor or, you know, uh, sit here and talk. I really want the people to talk. So if you have any questions, I just want to open the floor up for questions uh, for this hour of power, as, as what I'm calling it, for this hour of power to answer questions about anything from writing, marketing, sales, anything pertaining to your vision. Um, and uh, I don't even care if it's personal, um, just any questions that anyone might have. And if you don't have any questions, you can feel free to, uh, you know, uh, quietly bow out because, you know, it's not providing any kind of uh, particular value at this moment. So I just want to open up the, the door, uh, open the floor for any questions that you may have in your particular situation and helping you get to that next level. Okay, I'll start out. Um, so the fact that um, you know the background of my, my book and mm -hmm. the story, and when I look at it from the marketing, PR, and community affairs type of perspective, mm -hmm. that's going to be, that's going to take a lot of chunk of time for me because I'm trying to live in like different organizations like the Alzheimer's Association and get people behind me so yeah. they uh, recommend the book to people who might need this type of thing or to support groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I have background in public relations and, you know, doing press releases and things like that. But how much time do you usually set aside if you have something that's more um, focused on trying to connect with a certain type of community before the book actually is out? Mm -hmm. That's a, it's actually a great question. And actually um, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, that we definitely need to address. Um, this is not, this is not going to be a passive business, right? Um, if you right. really want to push and sell books, so you're going to, you may have to look into possibly hiring some people because yeah. of, you know a team um, or a virtual assistant, and basically you're going to have to reach out to you know, some leaders in this industry, you know, not just uh, not just going and throwing out blanket uh, requests for speaking opportunities. I mean, you'll do that, but uh -huh. you definitely want to find leaders in the industry. I'm sorry about that. I need to disconnect my phone from the computer. Uh, but yeah, you'll need to find leaders in the industry. And if you can pinpoint leaders who have some decision-making, uh, you know, power, to say, yes, we, we want to bring your book into 
you know, our network of, of you know, homes or businesses or, you know, connect to our um, our database, um, then that's, that's going to be the target for you, um, particularly since you're dealing with a specific kind of disease and uh, for elderly and, you know, all okay. So, yeah, but I do, I do think you're going to probably have to put together a team. Somebody who can do that for you while you're right. with, you know, with your work. And then your dad as well. I mean, is he, he's, in, is he, we know that he has um, um, community uh, connections, connections yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We know that he, <laughs> he's an organizer. So yeah. um, he may want to, you know, maybe engage him on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. Have you dealt with anybody um, or published a book that had like the support of a national organization or support type of organization? Not a uh, national organization, but I do have a client who uh, he speaks to a lot of um, Fortune 500 government institutions, uh, HCA. Um, mm -hmm. And so he gets a lot of, of bulk orders from them, uh, huh. even colleges are calling and getting his book because of his connections and how he's, you know, leveraging his connections with those groups. So, okay. yeah, okay. I mean, the 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 goal is to get to bulk orders. You know, you don't want to yeah. deal with trying to sell one book at a time. That's going right. to drive you crazy. So <laughs> the goal is to figure out how do I get, you know, a company or organization to buy 20, 50 books at a time. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just starting to kind of think about that now because, of course, I need to get through finishing the book and making sure it's top notch where I want it to be. And yeah. that's going to take a minute. But yeah. I just know that this is going to be more of a focus specifically for this topic. So, yeah, um, yeah. okay, that's coming down it the is, road. It is definitely a focused, uh, a, a niche audience that you're going to have. But but think about it like this, though. You got a bullseye, right? So you, of course, you're not, you might be able to, uh, to sell to people who are dealing with Alzheimer's, if mm -hmm. they're, depending on what stage they're in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and if they're, if they are uh, accepting it, right? Because you know, you and I both know. Uh, I know in my story with my mom, you know, she she's not accepting it. And then you know, it depends on where she is mentally, whether she's what time frame she's in mentally. But um, if they are in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's or something, they may uh, you may be able to help them directly. Um, <laughs> Which brings up a, a good point. Let me deviate real quick. We need to make sure in your book that you provide some helpful information, right? What are, what are things people can do? <laughs> and remember, Tim, in the beginning, uh, I, it, you're the editor or whoever it was, you had somebody read it and they, mm -hmm. they were like, oh, this, this jumped to a self-help book because I yeah. did have a chapter in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I took all that out, but it's going to now be an appendix more so. Okay. Um, there's like some, some 10 like to do's or don't do's when you're okay. dealing with somebody with Alzheimer's, stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. when people glance at it, they appreciate that. But in yeah. the back, I probably yeah. can flush out a little bit more like helplines or orations and things like that. So yeah. yes. And okay. maybe, uh, maybe also, maybe um, in the story, in the creative uh -huh. part of the story, we can have Brooke or whoever is talking to the doctor and the doctor is giving them information. That way we stay in the uh, creative, yeah. but we're still giving help for information, right? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, okay. So that could be something that we do. And, uh, you know, when we do our writing sessions, then we'll, when we get to that point, we can, we can deal with that. But, okay, great. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, where was I going? I deviated and lost track. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no. But, um, so, yeah, uh, for, for you, uh, when we you're writing about, oh, I was saying that you, you have a niche audience. So you have your target, which would probably be, your target audience will probably be the supporters of people with Alzheimer's. Uh, but within that target may be people who are in those early stages of Alzheimer's who can understand 
and uh, and, and are looking for answers, right? Right, um, right. And then in the second tier, the second circle of of, uh, of your audience is going to be um, people who support those people. So the doctors, um, the the um, organizations, right? Those those mm-hmm. organizations and and providers, service providers who help um, who help the people dealing with Alzheimer's and their families. So. Uh, what would, what you'll want to do is just figure out who that target market is, right? Who's the bullseye, who's the secondary, who's the third okay. tier, mm-hmm. and then create a plan on how do we reach these people effectively. Okay. All, All right. right. Let me stop and say, Demetra, uh, welcome um, to the master class. I, uh, like I was telling everyone, this is not <clears throat> a time for me to just talk and and, uh, and, and, and take control. Uh, I see you, Dr. Reese, and, and so you can go ahead and unmute. Um, this is not time for me to just talk and, and, and lecture, but I really want uh, you all to be able to ask questions uh, so that I can answer and help you get to that next level, whatever that next level is for you. So thank you for joining us, Demetri. Uh, Dr. Reese, go ahead. Oh, yes. Hi. Good morning, everyone. So my question is... Um, I'm assuming that I will need a professional photo for the back cover or whatever, you know, like they about the author. Mm-hmm. What are some recommendations as to like what that should look like given my genre of children's books? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of times people put out a book for children and then their picture on the back is more like a, a you know, model photo shoot, right? So you want to, you really want to appeal to your audience. You, if you have a children's book, then you want, you want the image, you want the uh, feel of your pictures to, I guess, uh, attract the children and attract the parents, right? So not that you have like, uh, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is you want to look like someone almost like a teacher type feel right something that's fun and inviting for children to feel like you know this is somebody i want to uh get to know and parents to feel like this is someone who has um you know who has a focus on youth and her audience does that make sense it does but that's what i mean like am i to have some kind of background or like what you know what I mean? Or should this yeah. just be like a headshot? Like, I don't quite know what direction to. Yeah, know. I mean, I would I would probably not have a background. I would probably just have your silhouette. Uh, not your silhouette, but I would probably um, I would probably erase the background and just have your your. Um, let me get you an example. I'm, I'm sorry to do this. I'm going to walk away from the screen real quick. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, of what I'm talking about. Let me take off the uh, filter real quick. And what I'm referring to, when I say I would erase the background, I would just make you the focus. Uh, I would make you the focus. Wait, give me a second. Sweetie, can you wait? Give me a second till I get right. up. Just so if you see like this book right here, we took the background out and we just put it, you know, and just put the text around him. That's what I would do with you. It, whether it's you standing or sitting or whatever, I would just, I wouldn't have a background. You're going to have a children's book anyway. So you're going to have design on the back of that book that's more, um, focused on your audience and so we just have just your face or your or your um your solo picture right there then that's that's what i would do that's what i'm thinking that's that's my original thought so i would just do like a photo shoot get a lot of pictures and then let us figure out which one is a best fit for you but i guess what i'm what i'm saying is like the type of outfits you wear for a children's book that's what i'm saying as far as focusing on you know, your audience uh, in that, in that respect, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And I'll, you know, also just look at some books as as well, just to kind of yeah. start thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, that that's um I mean, even though that that's what you that's one of those uh, details, you know, that I don't think it will have a, as great an impact, but you know, it's, it's one of those details that that just contributes to the overall experience of the book. Demetra, did you have any questions? Um, no, I'm good. I'm just here for the information. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, um, any other questions? Like I said, I was telling everyone, Demetra, um, you know, I'm not going to in this particular session, maybe I will in the future, but in this particular session, I'm not, I'm really here to answer questions, right? What I'm finding is that people have questions about the publishing industry. It's very intimidating. Um, it's very intimidating for a lot of people to get beyond that, that comfort zone and, and put their book out. I have people who have actually written the book and, you know, and they're sitting on it. I've had clients who have paid me half of the deposit, you know, thousands of dollars. And then when it was time to write the book, they disappeared, right? I've got a couple of clients in that situation where they've paid for the, for the publishing, but the writing process become, has become so intimidating um, that they've just walked away from it. And so what I'm trying to do is create uh, venues for people to get advice, get information that's going to empower them and help them get to the next level. Um, you know, it, it seems like it's an intimidating process because many people don't know what the next step is and what success looks like down the road. And I just want to tell you, success is easy in this industry. It's easy. I'm not saying it's not hard work, but it is easy because it's a product that sells itself. It, you know, when you write a book, you, you have a product now. You have a product. Nobody, you don't have to get permission from anybody to sell this product. If you are broke, you can sell this product. Like this is your product to sell to the world and make money and succeed and, and create the lifestyle that you want for yourself. And it's doable. Uh, but like I said earlier, the only caveat is execution. You got to get out there, execute. Whether if you don't want to do anything, because I know Doc, you don't want, you don't really, you got a lot on your plate. So, you know, Dr. Reese, you have a lot on your plate. So, you know, getting out here trying to sell books, that's probably not going to be feasible for you. But creating a team that can do that for you, you know, it might be an investment, but it will also uh, pay off in the long run because it's going to give you, you know, the money that pretty much pays for itself. Um, so I do want to just say um, that, you know, I want to do this multiple times. I want to do this probably more consistently. We do have a uh, weekly writer's workshop. Demetra, where are you in your writing process or uh, with your book? Uh, what do you mean, like the writing process? Are you, I'm sorry, I, I, I may know you, I may not know you. Demetra, <laughs> what's your last name? <laughs> it's Blackman. I did the James. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw Demetra. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have told me who you were. Okay. Okay. Well, I do have a question. I guess how do you because you were saying, you know, it can pay for itself. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the momentum going? Um, our books did really, really good in the beginning. I can see it kind of dwindling down, but I want to keep the momentum going. We sold a lot of books. Yes. Um, and I'm very proud of that, but I want to like keep going so yeah. how do we keep that momentum going because it seems like i guess everybody that i'm around everybody has bought a book right but now right. i want to get to the people outside of that circle yeah um because uh, as you know i'm in school i'm a teacher like everybody bought a book so now how do i get out of my school <laughs> to you know do that i guess yeah so i'm gonna just this is uh this is where the tough part comes in. I, I have a little example here, right? So your first, your first uh, initial sales are going to come from your immediate circle of influence, right? Your immediate circle of influence is family, friends, coworkers, right? So that's the easy. That's the easy part. And then you got your secondary circle of influence, and these are the referrals you start to get. Right. So friends and family 
Uh, I'm sorry. Can you see that? So friends and family now, they're telling friends. And so you got a secondary uh, group of people who are starting to buy the book. These are less than these people, right? This third, this third circle of influence, that's where the, 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 uh, the hard work comes. I wish there was a way I could tell you that um, an easy way to keep the momentum going, but there is not. There is not. The fact is you have to really start to push the envelope and really push yourself out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to do things kind of like this. This is a this is this to me is for my industry a way of reaching outside of my uh, set first and second circle of influence and reaching out to a greater audience so that we can keep the momentum going of bringing in new business, right? As an author, you are a business, so you have to create new business. So for you, Demetri, you're going to have to come up with something, whether it's a podcast, you have a platform, like there's you have a reason for your books and you have a, a message that you're trying to to uh, to uh, spread. So you're going to have to really start to develop that platform and reach out to other influencers who are also interested in that platform. Right. Um, tell me again, what was your platform, your purpose for your book series? Um, of course, it's uh, James and Eugene Save the Planet. It just uh -huh. teaches kids um you know how to better take care of things in their home and the environment um mm -hmm. i guess to make the world a, a better place mm -hmm. um which the children i mean ate it up the parents loved it um so it's been a good hit yeah um so anytime i go around like parents or children if i see them in like superhero costumes or whatever mm -hmm. um especially my husband he's really the go-getter and we'll mm -hmm. say like oh so you're a superhero well my wife has a book about superheroes do you uh -huh. want to see it or do you want to you know so that's how we kind of uh get them if it's something coming up like earth day or something like christmas yeah. birthdays hey why don't you try this book out you know um uh -huh. one platform that we have my son is just um he switched football teams mm -hmm. and so we are looking into um reaching out to them mm -hmm. um because it's a, of course it's predominantly black football team so i'm like yes mm -hmm. and they're you know young so once we get kind of acclimated with this football team i think we're going to go after them as well okay. um, but usually well, let me ask you this let mm -hmm. me ask you this uh i got two things one you said once you get acclimated with them right um and I'm going to challenge you to not. Only because I don't want to seem like a solicitor, like, hey, buy my book. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to seem really creepy or. That's what I want to get to. That's what I want to get to. You have to do that. You know, <laughs> the 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 ideal that you are coming across creepy, that's that's on you. Like, they may not think that, right? Okay. They they may be very happy to support a child's parent. Who's got a product? We put these thoughts on ourselves. You know, when I put out my first book, I was so intimidated, but I finally did it. I just started going through my neighborhood. I'm like, I got, I'm living in a community here with potential buyers, and I'm afraid to knock on their door because I'm thinking I don't want to come off like some creeper. So I go to the first neighbor and they get upset with me because I haven't told them that I wrote a book, right? They're like, I can't believe you never came by. So we put these thoughts on ourselves that, you know, uh, I'm coming across as a creeper. I'm coming off as a salesperson, as a door-to-door, -door, you know, car salesman. But they may not feel like that. So I want you, I want to challenge you. If your son is in this organization, if your son is in this football organization, most likely you've had to pay dues, Um Whoever you spend money with should spend money with you. Okay. So if you've already got your child in this, uh, in the football team, you paid the dues. I think you have a full right to, to say, Hey, I've written this book. I'd love your support. Maybe we can get one for all the kids and just leave it on the table. Now, there is a point where you can start to get creepy and, and, and abusive 
But, you know, just making the introduction and giving the option, that's not being creepy. That's not being uh, uh, overselling. Um, so I don't think uh, I don't think you should wait until you get acclimated. Momentum is constant movement, right? That's what momentum is. It's constant movement. So if you if you have anything where you're saying I'm going to wait, you're stopping your own momentum. So you don't want to stop your own momentum. Any idea you have, act on it and then learn from it, right? So if you do go up and they say, hey, man, you need to back off. You're being creepy. Then you learn from that. <laughs> you learn from that and then you adjust your strategy. Um, is this is this making sense, Demetri? Perfect sense. <laughs> okay. Another thing I, wanna, uh, I wanted to mention, I'm, I, I was looking at my phone. I wasn't uh, ignoring you. I was looking at my phone because what's the first first uh, CNN story? First CNN story is about the climate, the climate uh, and healthcare bill. That's that's your wheelhouse, right? So you want to connect with your audience by using um, current events, things that are in everybody's mind right now. So you can find, you can start to show yourself as as an authority on this topic by connecting to these stories and 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 somehow creating. Uh, a connection between what's going on in real life and your story and your platform. Okay. So you may want to look into doing a, a podcast. You may want to look into doing a, uh, maybe a blog, something, uh, get a MailChimp account and send out an a email blast um, and keep your platform in people's faces as much as possible. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank good, you. Good. Now I know I know for a fact we set up a database for your sales. Are you all reaching out on a regular basis to all the email addresses that were on that database? I'm looking at my husband and I'm trying to <laughs> Uh, we're doing what we can. Of course, okay. I heard you tell somebody else, like, we have a lot on our plate. Yeah, so okay. we're just trying to take it. I mean, now that you've said what you said, I kind of mm -hmm. understand that, you know, we shouldn't have, but we're trying to take it kind of slow and try mm -hmm. to make sure we're not missing a step, mm -hmm. make sure we're not doing the wrong thing. So we are doing it. We're just not doing it as, I guess, quick as we would like. Mm -hmm. uh, because like I said, the sales are good. People are buying. It's mm -hmm. just the momentum, like you said, that outside. We have that core base yeah. and we do have people that are referring other people. Mm -hmm. But it's just the outside, outside. Yeah. You know, yeah. because we're kind of running out of, like right. I said, everybody's on the book. So it's kind of like, okay, now we got to reach the masses. So yeah. how do we do that and keep right. it going? Yeah, and, and oh, yeah. We have to going, you're gonna have to step out of your comfort zone. You're gonna have to let me ask you this because some people's desires are different. If you can make this platform and this book your sole source of income, and you could make that to the point where you don't have to work anymore, would you want that or do you want to stay, you know, in your Cool. No, I would absolutely love that and keep writing books and just kind of venture off on like novels and things okay. like that. Because, okay. I mean, that's my thing is to write. But okay. It's just, you know, life. So yeah. you don't have that time to do it. But if I could, definitely. Okay. So that's encouraging because what that means is it's okay for me to tell you that it's okay for you to be aggressive, Right. It's okay for you to be aggressive. It's okay for you to make mistakes. It's okay for you to do it the wrong way so that you can learn how to do it the right way. What happens is we keep push, putting ourselves back by saying, is this the right way? Is this the right way? Well, you won't know until you do it. And a lot of times the wrong way creates something that's, that's better than the right way. Okay, now what I mean by that is the uh, bubble gum was a mistake. It was a scientific mistake, right? They were trying to get something else and they created bubble gum. Now, bubble gum is a billion dollar industry, right? So a lot of times we may find 
the the perfect ideal by accidentally doing the wrong thing, right? So what I would suggest to you all, uh, Demetri and Michael, I would suggest writing down every idea that you have to promote and push this book, okay? Write them down because as long as they're just bouncing around in your head, they're really not real. They're not real until you write them down. And then, um, and then if you want to do it, you know, slowly, at least execute something, something new to promote the book. But because right now it sounds like you all had the first plan, which, you know, is aggressively ask any person I run into, well, that can only take you so far, right? So now, and this is for everybody, uh, now um, it's time to create systems. It's time to create systems that will allow you to get business and keep the message going out, even while you're at work, even while you're sleeping. So podcasting, um, blogging, creating some kind of uh, maybe workshop or or some kind of uh, seminar or webinar uh, where you can talk to your audience and promote your message. This is going to start a system where people are starting to hear about you, learn about you, even while you're not actively pushing them, okay? Um, so I would say write, write down as many ideas as you can about how to promote your book and then execute at least one a month, if not one a week or one a day. Because I know you all have many ideas. You have many ideas. Yeah, we do. And then most importantly, don't ignore the diamonds in your front yard. You all have a database of, I know for a fact, you all have a database full of emails. Uh, reach out to them, ask for referrals, uh, come up with some kind of like monthly special or a competition or something, um, you know, uh, give them a $25 gift card to uh, whoever, I don't know, something, right? <laughs> but something that gets people excited about the book, about the platform, so that you can start getting that momentum going consistently. If you stop, Momentum doesn't happen to you. It happens through you, okay? So you have to make sure you have to keep the momentum going. You have to push. Once you get to that hill, that that boulder is not going to roll itself up. You got to you got to push harder and get that boulder up the hill to keep the momentum going. Is that Thank you. Dr. Reese, I see your hand. Is that another question or it's just not I'm sorry. There's so much um, oh. going here. I'm just listening in. Sorry, okay. I lower my hand. Thank no, you. no. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm going to refer a book to you all. And this book is called Sell Your Book Like Wildfire uh, by Rob Eager. And this is a great book to, to kind of, what I found, it, it gives some fundamentals, right? Gives you some fundamentals about book selling and the different uh, st strategies you need to take to, um, to sell your book effectively. Um, now, I'm going to say this as well. Public speaking, um, creating events where people you know, come to hear you talk about your book or your platform is going to be a huge part of your success. If no one knows about you, no matter how great your book is, they're not going to buy it. And uh, personal referrals, word of mouth can only go so far. You've got to create opportunities for people to get to meet you, get to know you. And uh, everybody's got 30 minutes. Everybody's got 30 minutes somewhere, right? A 30 minute um, Zoom call, a 30 minute event break like this um, is a great opportunity. I didn't know who will come, but here we have three people. So, you know, we've been able to affect and help three people 
Um, and, you know, if the information has been helpful, I want to ask you all to, uh, when I put on my next one, refer somebody else. But, you know, it's a, it's a grassroots thing. We're going to continue to grow. And it's the same with your books. Everything, everything that you put towards your book is a seed, a seed and it will bring forth a harvest. So don't doubt it. Um, and don't question it. Just just put the effort out there and something's going to come from it. One of my favorite scriptures is that in all labor, there is profit. That's what the Bible says. In all labor, there is profit. So everything you all are thinking about, I need to do this, but I don't know if I should do it now or maybe I shouldn't be too aggressive. In all labor, there is profit. Something will come out of it. Some kind of benefit will come out of it. Even if it's just you reach one new person, that one person, I want y'all to think about this. Oprah Winfrey is one person, right? Oprah Winfrey is one person, but if, if Oprah Winfrey likes your book, that book becomes known to the world. You never know who that one person is that's going to take you from, from here to, to there, right? So, Make it a point to, to try to do something weekly, daily, monthly to reach one new person. So that's my word on that. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, I won't hold you all any longer. But um, if you do have more questions, all of you all have my number to text me, call me. You know I love to talk to you more. Any other questions? What do you think about donating books? I think it's a great idea. So the greatest um, uh, world, let me see, what's the word I'm trying to say? Um, world record holding uh, author, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Chicken Soup for the Soul author, he sent out, he and his writing partner sent out five books a day for a year. They sent them to people in Hollywood, actors, movie producers, uh, uh, television shows, until finally there was an episode of Friends where they had the book. Chandler was reading the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And after that episode, the book blew up. It blew up and it became a record-breaking um, bestseller, okay? So I believe if you're going to donate, be specific and be strategic. Who are you giving the book to? Is this, a, is this an influencer who can get the book into the hands of bigger people or bigger organizations, right? So your book needs to be in every school. Same with you, Dr. Reese. You know, you want your book in every school. You want your book in the place where children are, right? So daycares, um, community centers, these are, you know, so, so if you're going to donate books, make it strategic so that you're donating books to people who can say, I want your book in my network and we're willing to buy copies for all of our students. How does that sound? Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Well, I won't hold you all longer. I really appreciate uh, you all coming out. You know, you put stuff out there. You don't know who's going to come. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's worth it when, you know, if we can just get one person to uh, to get something out of what we put forth. So um, we're going to do it again. I may do it every Saturday. I don't know. Um, I just got to figure it out. But this is, Demetria, this is an example of, uh, of me dealing with the same thing you're dealing with. How do I keep the momentum going? How do I get more people to learn about what I do and what I offer? And a lot of times, to your point, a lot of times everything don't need to be uh, a fee. Everything don't need to be uh, 
charged. Sometimes you need to share, like in the mall, you know, give out the little pieces of chicken so people can know what, what your product tastes like. So <laughs> this is an example of me uh, keeping the momentum going um, because I'm at that point, Demetra, where you want to be. I'm at that point where this is what I do now, right? I will never go back to a nine to five because I see what God has for me here. And so I'm going to do whatever I can, uh, whether I do it right or wrong, in order to make sure that I'm keeping the momentum going. So I'm going to encourage all of you all, keep the momentum going. If you can't personally do it, get help, get an assistant. You know, get uh, put together a team, a support team, uh, uh, allies who will go out and sell the book on their spare time. And then you give them, you know, some kind of commission or something that makes it worth their while. Right. Because we can't do it all on our own. We can't. You can't be everything to the business or you're going to fail. So even as an author, you know, getting a team together to uh, to promote and sell your book is going to be something that will be beneficial for you. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate all of you again. Uh, I'll put out a promotion if, if when I do it again next week, I'm not going to say if I do it, I am going to do it again next week. If you can invite somebody or share it with somebody, uh, if you can post on social media that we had a great time and that we, you know, you learned a lot. All of that will be helpful uh, to, 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 to what we're trying to do here. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a great Saturday.